purpose of this lab is to look at some of the pigments that are present in green leaves. This lab is part of a lab series for the course BIOL 1 to 1, which is our introductory biology course. So the overall topic that we're looking at here today is the topic of photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, green plants use their leaves primarily to trap carbon dioxide and along with the water that goes up from their roots to the stems to the leaves, they can manufacture food which could be converted into various substances. Our purpose today is to look at some of the pigments that actually make leaves green. The green that we see on the leaves may not necessarily be only green pigment. <clears throat> in fact, most greens are a combination of different pigments in the, in the plant leaves. There are several different pigments that are present in plant leaves and some of these pigments are carotenes which give a faint yellow appearance, xanthophylls which are yellow, chlorophyll A which appears to be bright green, chlorophyll B which appears to be a yellowish green and anthocyanin which appears to be red. So although we look at leaves and we see primarily green, there are many different pigments that contribute to the overall color that we see. And what we are doing today with this chromatography lab, we want to separate the pigments which are present in a selected set of leaves. So we have here leaves taken from six different leafy vegetables and we want to compare the range of pigments that are found in these leaves. In our first container, we have pak choy crushed. In the second one, we have spinach crushed. This one, we have kale, red cabbage, cabbage, and in the last one, we have regular lettuce. So we've already crushed our plant samples so that we have pretty much extracted some of the pigment contained within these leaves. And what I'm going to demonstrate is how we set up our chromatography area. So I'm going to demonstrate how we set up the investigation to see what pigments are present in spinach. This is a nice dark green and we have crushed the spinach leaves in here to obtain a dark solution from those leaves. On my chromatography paper, you'll notice I have drawn two lines. This first line is the area where I'm going to put a drop, or a few drops actually, of my spinach solution. right at this point Oops. and then I'm going to hang the paper into the solvent the solvent is alcohol and you notice that the tip of my chromatography paper has fallen within the solvent and the solvent is going to be moving up this chromatography paper by capillary action and causing the pigments that I have obtained from my spinach to dissolve. We're going to leave the setup for a little while to allow it to separate into the various components of the pigments that make the spinach leaf so dark green. And what we will do afterwards is to set up the jars for all of our other leaves. We have kale, red cabbage, regular cabbage, as well as lettuce. So each one of these leaves have been crushed. So solutions are at the bottom of each of these small beakers. And what we're doing next is putting a drop of each one of them onto these separate 
pieces of chromatography paper and then placing the paper after we've added the drop into the beakers with the solvent and allowing the solvent to rise by capillary action as we are seeing it happening here in this beaker we are seeing the green color starting to rise up through the chromatography paper now we are going to leave this to rise for a little while because we want it to rise until it reaches to the front line which is the second line that I've drawn on the chromatography paper both lines have been drawn with pencil so that there isn't the possibility of ink dissolving in the solvent and interfering with the results that we want to see. We want to see the separation of all of the different pigments that comprise the screen color from our spinach. So the other five sources of pigment are going to be set up next and at the end of a certain period of time we're going to come back and take a look to see what our results look like because our aim is to compare the various types of pigments that are found in these six different leafy vegetables. We have come back to our chromatography experiment. Recall that we had used six different sources of plant pigments obtained from, from pak choy leaves, spinach leaves, kale, red cabbage, cabbage, and lettuce leaves. We had put solutions coming out from each one of these plant sources into different chromatography chambers. So we are calling our beakers covered with this foil our chromatography chambers. The solvent that we had used is alcohol, which evaporates fairly quickly. Hence the need for covering each one of our chromatography chambers with foil and that is to prevent the alcohol from evaporating too quickly out of these chambers. In the next step, what we're going to do is to now remove the covers, remove our chromatography paper from each one of the chambers and we are going to show what the results look like for each one of the vegetable sources that we used originally. So now we are going to show the results on our different pieces of chromatography paper which were in the different solutions. This is the one that was in the spinach solution. Now we have used a special type of chromatography paper that allows the pigments to be a little bit more easily seen when this UV lamp that I'm using is shone upon the, the special chromatography paper. So I'm going to move this from one to the next to allow you to see what has happened with the pigments in each of the different leaf sources. So we're going to move on next to the one that was taken from the pak choy. I'm just moving the UV lamp slightly up and down to give you some views of what has happened to the pigment that was taken from the pak choy. Next one is the sample that was taken from kale. And then we have the sample from the red cabbage. This one is from ordinary cabbage.
And the final one is from lettuce. And these are the results of our investigation today. When we meet in our virtual classroom, we are going to discuss how we will interpret these results and calculate the RF values in each of the different samples of chromatography.